Part two of the Scratch Division title match here from historic Golden Pin Lanes in Tucson. Brad Van, Brian Van Sickle is looking to win his first title. He's got up against a tough customer and 12-time winner Riley Dempsey, and he's dug himself a big hole here. He trails by 23 pins. We're in the mulligan format, and they each have one left, and he cannot find the 1-3 pocket right now. We talked about it in the previous video. That must have been the ball that he's using all day long, and it's tough when you lead a tournament all day long with one bowling ball, but I think that's the... I think that's the wrong ball for the pattern right now. As the lanes continue to dry out throughout the day, that ball is just bleeding all of its energy in the first 30 feet of the lane, and he's throwing it looks about as hard as he can possibly throw it, and it's still creeping up high on him. Looks like he's going to stay with that ball. He's now used his second mulligan, so he's out of them. Riley still has one remaining. Hello, Stacy. Let's see if he can find something else in the lane. Much deeper. Good move. And then the ball doesn't quite come up. Symptomatic there of the Dick Weber pattern that we were just talking about at the very end of the first part of this video. The Dick Weber pattern is in blocks. Every five boards, the length of the pattern changes. Longer and longer throughout the middle. So it flattens it out some, but also if bowlers are in one particular area of the lane, as they chew up the oil in that area, instead of just migrating left with normal two and one or three and one moves, You've got to generally make a massive adjustment on the lane to get back into the pocket. Wherever Brian had been playing previously to cruise to the top seat today with 7 out of 8 200 games, uh, wherever he was in the semis especially to shoot a 660 that got him to the top seed, that spot is burnt out now. It's not projecting that ball far enough down the lane. And he did a much better job on that second mulligan attempt there, but he also found a lot more oil because it's in that blocks and he two pins. So he's got to find the happy medium between the two and right there may be it. But will he run out of time? He can only max now for 234. Which would still make Riley do a lot of work, but I mean, we're a long way from maxing as that's his first strike of the match here in frame number six. Dempsey opened his match with a triple, whiffed a 10 pin in the fourth, a little sloppy there, and struck again in the fifth. And conversely, I do like his look. He got a chance to fish around in the last match because he put it away so quickly. Using a pretty aggressive ball and covering a lot more boards than he did in the previous matches. And he looks fantastic right there. Riley took advantage of the uh, eligibility rules to go bowl USBC Masters last week out in Vegas. Struggled a little bit, but that's obviously a totally different level here than bowling at the Scratch Junior level. That's bowling against 300 of the best pros in the world and amateurs in the world. Cam uh, Riley's buddy Cameron Smith over there watching him bowl the finals. Not only did Riley beat him to get to the title match, but Cameron cashed in the Masters, which is just an incredible accomplishment. So hats off to him. Got a push, yeah. Smith called it immediately as he had to push. Now Riley does have one more mulligan and another strategic. It's amazing how these couple little do-over options make all make all kinds of different uh, strategic questions here. Now, like I said, if you're on the double, that gives you the maximum potential benefit from the mulligan. But at the same time, you know, do you hold one in the bank? If the match gets closer later, I agree. Take the mulligan here. You're on the double, like I said, and you got a good look here, so you stand a real good chance of striking. It was, I think, more execution on that last shot than the lane's changing for Riley. So neither bowler has any more do-overs. There will be no more erased frames. It's whether Riley can hold on to the significant lead he has now of 33 pins the rest of the way. If he does strike, it'll be a 43 pin lead through seven frames. He likes it, he loves it. Oh, and a big reaction. I like the move. You're playing the you're a rookie as far as step ladder title matches go. Really let him know that you're uh, emotionally and mentally invested in this match. Only one of his better title match games in a while. The big asterisk to all that is, as veteran as Riley is with 12 titles and everything, Riley has not yet won this season, and it's January, and our season started in August. Yeah, and unfortunately I saw it coming sticking with that ball, 
the ball's hooking early on him. Brian obviously smart enough to recognize that when you do either step in or throw it even faster, you don't catch it all, you pipe it out of that zone into the next zone, and the ball doesn't even get back to the head pin. He's going to spare it though. Yeah, nice job of the washout. See it over and over again. Anybody who is a bowler has done it over and over again. Everybody knows how it is to be in Brian's situation there, where all of a sudden you get over under coming from out of nowhere. The zones will do it to you, and just tough to make that change when you just got to try and pry off 10 more good shots. That's a nice ball. You see how he didn't try and throw that ball 100% speed, just backed off it a little, let the lane do the work. And he shakes his head because he knows that this is one that he was about to get away from. Yes, Starling. What up to Riley? What up to Riley? Well, he caught up some, but he's still got an awful lot of work to do. I don't know if Riley's going to not strike anymore. Dempsey just executing brilliantly right now. It's not Ebonite, but it's Ebonite International. He's Riley sporting the track in Ebonite International Company. And Brian sporting the hammer. Fall under the Ebonite umbrella. Thanks to Ebonite for all they do for us. We raffle off a ball at every single one of our tournaments. Cal Carpenter won the ball today. Had some immediate offers from the <laughs> peanut gallery to, to take that win away. Almost had Powerball hit today. Dominic Luna came within an inch or two of a thousand dollars. Tied up. Is that in? Was that on time? Plenty of time. Oh, not enough time. Oh, too late. Wow, oh, U of A just blew it against Washington at home. I'm very conflicted about that result right here, I gotta tell you. <laughs> Van Sickle can still max for 214. Riley takes care of business with that spare and locks up the title. Take a uh, foul or something like that. 251, you're running. Yep. Oh, the ball was so uh, second touch. Well, for Brian, a frustrating game, but a lot of great experience for him. First time tasting what a title match is like. Really? He's going to remember sorry, but that was all ball. the things that happened here and throw a stronger ball. game in his next title ball. match, I guarantee. And there's going to be more title matches for him as he is an up-and-coming bowler. He started in scratch last year and, and made a couple cuts, did great in some of our match play events. First time in a stepladder format making the title match. It's good to see a variety of bowlers too. That ball was striking all day for him and I don't know what else he's got in the bag, but we'll never know now. And for Riley, finally breaking a long, long schneid here to go winless for a bowler of his ability and the amount that he bowls was uh, pretty crazy. And we've seen it happen before. Once the ice gets broken, they go on runs. So lucky number 13 for Riley. It could be the first of a little roll he gets on. We've seen Cameron get on a roll this year. Kyle always gets on rolls. And over and over again. Congrats to Riley. He will leave a mulligan in the bank and be in the 230s. See you next time, folks.